Hello from MWC 2025. I'm here together with Lasina Kune, CEO of Smart Africa. Hello, Lasina. Nice to meet you. Hi, Kim. Nice meeting you. Thanks for inviting me. You're always welcome on our channel. Yes. MWC seems to be a hectic four days. And I've seen a lot of what you posted, what you shared. Yes. You also had quite a busy time. Can you share a bit what happened here? A lot of African governments, public sector were here as well. Absolutely. This year, a Mobile World Congress 2025 was really amazing. And you can see everywhere you go, you just talk about AI. So Smart Africa, we came here, we participated for many reasons. The first reason is we had a ministerial round table here in order to take our ministers through the AI, African AI Council that we are creating, brief them about the progress, about the declaration, about the concept note to get the feedback. That was one day before the Mobile World Congress. And the Mobile World Congress started on the 3rd. And you can see everywhere, everything we're talking about is actually happening. It's actually amazing. This is going to be a very, very interesting and very challenging year at the same time. So I'm quite happy to be here. So exciting times ahead again. Absolutely. It's the best moment of our life, actually. <laughs> That's good. So last year we were together at MWC and we discussed the role of AI. It was still a big buzzword. Yes. We didn't really know how it affects all the different sectors. What changed from the last 20, 12 months until now? Oh, a lot of things changed. In fact, we need to maybe revisit the Moore's Law because... 12 months ago, we were talking about the impact of AI, how it's going to be benefiting in Africa. We were talking about more into the large language model, uh, natural language processes. But now AI is everywhere. Okay. If I say everywhere, I mean, it's going to impact a lot. But we in Africa, we're looking at three, particularly three key elements. How do we use the AI in agriculture for precision agriculture? and how we can use it in education, how we can use it in healthcare. But beside all that, we truly believe that, you know, the AI will bring to us in Africa what we call knowledge and social inclusion. Which means, as I mentioned to you before, the literacy rate in Africa is very high. It's very, it's very low. We basically about 45 to 50% which assume that the remaining 50% are not really educated. But even if educated, there is a digital divide. It means not the 50% educated, they are actually digital. Now that we have AI, to avoid AI to create another divide, AI will actually bring people who uneducated people to be able to interact with the technology. That's what I call social and knowledge inclusion. So it's actually a good thing for Africa because it's driving it's a driving force and it's a catalyzer for digital transformation. But a lot has been happening. Healthcare impact, transportation impact, education impact, fintech impact, even cybersecurity. In the cybersecurity, we're looking at the prevention, predictions, automation. Because nowadays, you know, even when you're attacked by cybersecurity, cyber, cyber forces, most likely it's the AI agent. So we're really going towards identicalization of AI which is scary at the same time, but I think it's a huge opportunity for Africa because we're starting from zero. Yeah. So we have an opportunity to live forward. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So AI is actually also well known, at least what everyone talks about is we need more processing power. We need bigger data centers. What is your take on that for, let's say, more focus on emerging markets? You know, a, this could have been a true this was a true two months ago. But what happened in between December 2024 and January 2025, it shows that we don't need to boil the entire oceans to have a cup of tea. We were made to believe, of course, it's also science, that to be really to adopt to AI, to harness AI, you need a lot of computing power, a lot of energy. Until one of the smaller models face the frontier model, show that they can actually train using a distillation. Actually, you can, dis you can do use the distillation to train a smaller model, which become more smarter than even the father of the mother model. And not with that many GPU, because in Africa, you have to admit we do not have access to a lot of GPU, even if you have access to it. So what are we going to do? I think Africa right now, we're in a position we are not aligned to anyone. We saw the frontier model. We saw 
you know, the frontier model, we saw also the challenging model. So we're actually very open, why? Because we are not looking for the most powerful AI in Africa, but we're looking for the most useful AI in Africa, in the context of Africa. And I hear a lot of this, you know, we don't have the energy, we don't have that and, and the computing power. But guess what? At least we have two countries in Africa who are listed on the top 500 in terms of supercomputing centers, South Africa and Morocco. You may say this is not enough, but with over 50 countries, more than half of the African countries they have a data centers which are consuming between five and 10 megawatt. What is the AI supercomputing power? It means the AI data center, which is consuming at least about 100 megawatt. That's what I said, no country alone can do it. If we gather, if we integrate ourselves, I believe that we can have at least dividing in Africa into different clusters, different regions, the region can have, of course, an AI-powered data center that can handle the huge calculations. So for Africa, AI should be more demand-driven. Absolutely. It's not about the power. Demand-driven also, not only that, in the African context. Because no matter what you said, AI is about biases at the end. If you're using a Western frontier model or the Eastern frontier model, it's all about bias. So what Afri what's Africa's position? We should have our own bias. Because at the end of the day, as you know, and I said it before, the whole world today is at a ground zero, except two nations, which are the United States and China. And this is really true. Because we're all at a zero, because those frontier models, they have their own biases. If it's a Western frontier model, if it's an Eastern frontier model, they have their own biases. So what do we have to do? Yeah. We have to build our own AI. Certainly we can't do it alone. We have to do it with the partnership. Yeah. And if you look also, which kind, what kind of partnership? Yeah. You have to look at Europe. Europe is the closest continent to Africa. Yeah. And historically we had a lot of trade relationship, education relationship, and we can look at the European model, which is basically user-centric not government-centric, not private service center-centric. It's a user-centric. I think that's one of the models that we should look into it. Yeah, very interesting. So at MWC, we see quite a good amount of public sector from Africa coming here, sending representatives. You also talked to a few of them. Do you think they finally see the need and the political willingness to be more open for technology in order to accelerate digital inclusion? I don't think they have a choice, and I don't think we have a choice. That's the thing. Yeah. Because when we talk about AI, for example, today, it requires investments. Yeah. With the nature of the geopolitic, geopolitical nature of the world today, where with the international funds, the international aid being cut, yeah. what do we do? We need to retract on ourselves. When we retract ourselves, we need to rely on our regional banks, regional development banks, to be able to help the private sector. And also something is very, very crucial that you need to know. You heard about all these speeches, different nations doing different declarations, $500 billion in the U.S. here, and you have $100 billion in France, $200 billion in Europe. They're all behind their private sector. So Africa, we need to be behind our private sector. The private sector, they have a vested interest in our continent. They will be our open AI. They will be our perplexity city. They will be our Grok 3. They will be our Lama. These are the private sector. Of course, we have a lot of multinational already technology companies established in Africa. So we need to basically get them closer and work with them in a partnership with our international development partners to have our own platform in place. Well said. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks Thank you for your insight. Much. Thank you as always. Thank that you. was Tech Africa News from MWC 2025. You can find more on techafricanews.com. <laughs>